Hello, this is Hakuda Bean, and I have discovered a little bit of an update to the back rooms, which I hope to go over and, uh, well, learn about as much as I'm explaining in here in this video. Apparently, they have added something called realities is to the back rooms. I'm quite sure this probably already existed, and I just never knew of it before. As we go over this, I hope that if you enjoyed the video, you are liking the video, commenting down below, and subscribing to the channel. And if you aren't, then I hope that... Eh, I'll question your logic later. Realities, otherwise known as rooms or superclusters, are defined as different universes or universe level areas that are significantly distinguished from the other universes around them. So, the algor the agglutinate matrix, which does not exist, the back rooms, the broken. The dimensional sublime, the front rooms, and level react redacted, which also doesn't exist. I think its other name is the down rooms, whatever that might mean. The broken. The broken cannot be considered a level by the standard definition. It is a fragmented, corrupted expanse outside the realm of the backrooms entirely. It can be considered the proverbial dumping grounds of the backrooms, a wasteland of unused, discarded data to leave from the database. But I please ignore the flashing a colorful gift that you that might be giving you a headache. An assemblage of seemingly innumerable levels. The appearance of the broken is a kaleidoscopic and modeled odd. Its architecture and layout do not follow any logical spatial structure. Its terrain, as it may be called, is stretched and twisted into shapes that are difficult to grasp. Refractions of light it seems to emanate from of elsewhere, everywhere, and nowhere, inging upon the landscape. This is basically a death sentence to anyone with an epilepsy. Do not go to the broken. That isn't written here, I'm just saying it now, because that gif is giving me a headache. There is no order or two fluctuating patterns uh, of colors and incomprehensible or dream Etric shapes that flicker in and out of the broken, splintered plate of existence. The fabric of its reality appears to be shattered as far as the eye can discern. Terrain and even light itself falls into distortion. Objects of higher dimension and space in and out of the broken's contorted and polychromatic landscape, turning what unappears upon contact, with every last bit of hypothetically processable data flowing through them out at once. Its environment is definitely loud, a discordant and cacophony of non unsensitive tones and howling frequency without a direct origin. The pure extent of the broken is impractical to describe in writing, as there is simply no frame of reference. It is a vast warp in the fabric of reality, a persistent shuffling mass of data and configurations extending unendingly into an enigma of one cannot fathom. In addition to the corruption of the landscape, the physical objects that constitute it are completely warped in character. Its structures are entirely devoid of any substance. The temporary yeah, accretions of some solid, formless substance. Objects fall from their former identities as they meander slowly toward the broken horizon, an eerie, chaotic, and decaying environment. Constantly changing and degenerating, increasingly entropy-ridden. These structures are 
fleeting. It, he fear if a marrow constructs the void of all substance, the purpose. The broken appears to hold a symbiotic relationship with the back rooms, ruined to be the source of much of its hostile and unstable energy. Its chaotic nature is theorized to be the result of a messy conglomeration of discarded levels merged into one. Entire dimensions internally ripped apart and remade into grotesque mementos of their former identities. Through the ensuing interaction between the areas, copious amounts of nonlinear energies accumulate. Developing into monstrous constructs that warp in ether your parents until they collapse into an unimaginably large chaotic singularity, leaving the broken as the aftermath. Everything of substance is suspended in the vast expanse of its unyielding space, it's inert and indifferent, indifferent to the, its amassing terrors, drawing energy from all sides and leaving behind an incomprehensible mess of data. Well, it is speculated by some that its nature is a result of having once been a great energy source, the creation of, of life in the, for the creation of life in the back rooms, others believe that the broken is merely a bizarre, meritless manifestation of reality with no inherent function or purpose. <clears throat> Making contact with any of the broken's fragmented surfaces, their organic or is constantly cannibalized and remained into horrifying and characters Characters of themselves with a blinding, pulsating heat. It is likely to represent the fabric of one's being, essentially overriding them with a torrent of corrupted data. And these, as they are typically categorized, do not appear to exist within it. And in the prismatic objects that face in and out of the broken have been reported to vaguely resemble multiple entities merged together, though they do not behave in any way that suggests sentience or sapience. And these introduced to the broken's environment and have been observed to take on its, on its qualities, altering and sporadically transmuting into phantasmagorical blocks of shimmering color, gradually merging with the environment, becoming part of it. These wretched beings solely exist through the mutation and transitions of flowing information, and are thus not bound by loss of their world, but are in inextri- in equally tied to it, allowing them to continue their existence without consuming or expanding any physical energy. Due to the inherent dangers within, paired with its heavily unstable nature, proper exploration of the broken has proven to be notoriously difficult to perform. I imagine impossible. <sighs> the Dimensional Sublime we already know what the back rooms is. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, jeez, this is going to be a long one. No, so that following page is best read in dark mode. Then let's activate that. <sighs> Warning, this page is restricted. Please enter valid. Not dealing with that. Warning, this page is restricted. Please enter valid credentials. Reason, you are not permitted to view this as file as it requires a higher level to access. MEG database login form. Enter the username. Gary. Insert password. This is from earlier. <sighs> the dimensional sublime. You're not supposed to be here. The dimensional sublime is the threshold between reality and unreality. It is a place where everything unwanted, untouched, and unloved is left to go. I really feel like I've read this before. Have I? Comment down below if I've read this before, because I feel like I have. Anyway, description. 
The Dimensional Sublime is a mysterious location consisting of three different sections found outside of reality and the back rooms. The Sublime seems to function as the junkyard of the back rooms and the reality. Everything that the universe has no use for will be transported for here, for this is not a place where one is supposed to be. The location's physical appearance resembles a large plane of, of indeterminate size with a cloudy weather pattern. There is no day and night at cycle that, cycle that has been indocumented. The only recorded weather patterns are the sparse and subtle winds in the wasteland area, which is the primary section of the sublime. The plain is covered with debris and unused remains of other levels and realities. Occasionally, one can find oases scattered throughout. Everything that is not uh, used in other realities, whether it is a level, an entity, or an item, will end up here. The sublime is where realities and backwards levels go to be, for lack of a better word, recycled. Physical realities that end up here are eventually replaced by another plane of existence. <sighs> Although Wi-Fi is non-existent, radio broadcasts are amplified to the point of being detectable from any a reality. Any signal, weak or strong, can be picked up anywhere. A test was conducted to uncover the true extent of this anomaly. A radio broadcaster was uh, stationed in an oasis and scheduled to send out uh, short pulses of waves, encoding information via Morse code. Radio receivers stationed in the front rooms, level 4 and level 399, picked up and decoded the information, thereby demonstrating that the signals do indeed permeate all of reality. Strangely, the dimensional sublime almost seems to be its own entity. With the way it the surface of the sublime, I'm in the best house of rebel in the wasteland, move and shift in emergent patterns, even targeting the wanderers unlucky enough to end up here. The MEG has done numerous experiments with drones to investigate its sublime to find a cause for the apparent sapience of the environment. Though the results have been inconclusive thus far, it is theorized that the intelligence of the environment is an emergent property resulting from the watcher's control over the sublime. Place of Forgotten Things From time to time, one will see remnants of levels, entities, debris such as stores, windows, those working glass, fluorescent lights, and entire buildings of dimensional or rips are falling from the sky. Sometimes landscapes like oceans, hills, forests, and deserts may suddenly replace the space one once occupied by the sublime. At times, entire mountains will fall out of the sky as if it, it is ripped from the very ground they, that they had manifested. One of the most dangerous things to enter the sublime is antimatter. If a piece of antimatter rifts to the sublime, then both the antimatter and corresponding amount of regular matter explode in a burst of pure energy which will destroy anything in its path. Most people do not know the true destructive power of antimatter, and as such, it would be necessary to inform explorers within the eventual sublime of this occurrence. <sighs> it is worth knowing that these occurrences will only manifest in the wasteland and area of the sublime, and as such, should one should not worry about worry extensively about their safety outside of the wasteland area. You're not supposed to be here, but you ended up here. All things do. Eventually, it is inevitable. Well, enjoy your new home. You won't be anywhere else for quite a while. Events. There are several events that occur here. Recovery. The recovery is a deadly class 5e e event that happens exclusively in the wasteland area. When this event occurs, the sky will turn red-orange like the sunset, and everything on the surface that did not originate from the sublime will start to melt and turn to dust, reducing everything to the atomic level. There are quite a few materials that are immune to this effect though, and will remain intact. It is not known when this event may occur, but this event is very rare. 
As such, one can still expect to encounter colossal amounts of unrecovered debris in the wasteland. <coughs> Excuse me. There are multiple biomes in the sublime that are not affected by this event. If you do not seek shelter, then you will be utterly destroyed. Permafrost. The permafrost is a deadly class 4E event that happens here. This event in consists of the entire sublime freezing to sub zero temperatures and freezing to sub temperatures for a varying amount of time, which means that a level or timeline is being restored to its original state. A kind of blue permafrost will form all over form over all surfaces. This permafrost does not, not seem to be frozen in, in form of a liquid, but instead its own material. The probability of this occurrence is random, but the watcher can control what happens and how. Like the previous event, you can survive by seeking shelter in other areas of the sublime. Items. Due to the fact that all unused parts of reality eventually end up in the sublime, a list of items will be nearly would be near infinite. Suffice to say, one can find any item with enough searching, though most consumable items are unsafe to ingest due to environmental hazards and the length of time that the item has been in the sublime. Entities. I think we'll read the entities and then we might need to be done. The Collector. The Collector is a, a moderate intelligent class 4 or entity exclusive to the dimensional sublime. You may find many of them in the wasteland area. This entity seems to take the form of an ordinary garbage truck, similar to antiquated automobiles from the front rooms. When it's not in its resting state, it can be seen collecting debris that could not be recovered for consumption and for the processing. When this entity sees a wanderer, it will attempt to reach out and take it to the pit. The collector seems to be driven by an unknown figure with a vaguely humanoid appearance. When it, it's in its resting state, the humanoid figure cannot be seen. It is not known if, if the truck is a part of the entity or if it is a ve this vehicle for the humanoid figure driving it. Attempts to investigate the biology of this event are ongoing. This entity can be found in the wasteland, part of the sublime. And this entity is immune to the events. The Pit The Pit is a highly unintelligent class 3 entity exclusive of 2D dimensional or sublime. Although very dangerous, it cannot move. One may find this entity in the wasteland area of the sublime. You may find more than one of them here. Warning! Do not approach! If you see this entity, stray right from it. Walking near will cause the, its monstrous jaws to open up and its horrifying tongue to shoot out. Pulling any unfortunate wanderer inside. This entity ex consists of nothing more than a huge and monstrous mouth opening down into a, a gaping underground pit. Oh, reminds me of the Sarlacc. Hence the name. The mouth consists of two jaws with an almost mandible like structure. It has no eyes or sharp teeth fit into the gums of this, this creature. The pit has scaly skin and a dark grayish green color. There seems to be some form of flowing tentacles protruding from the creature's strangely shaped lips. The pit is made of living tissue, organs, and a digestive tract. Being able to disguise itself by covering itself up with debris from the wasteland, it is advised that one stays away from strangely shaped lumps of debris. This entity feeds on the debris of recycled levels and timelines, and the debris keeping it alive and in constant operation. However, this entity can still function for up to five weeks without food. When the mouth of the pit is closed, it is impossible to enter, and his advice is not to try. It is important to note that this entity is almost completely invincible. Attempts to investigate the biology of this entity are ongoing. The entity can be found in the wasteland prior to survive. The entity is immune to events. The Watcher. The Watcher is a highly intelligent and mysterious clat as a mega entity, exclusive to the dimensional of Sublime's desert area. 
<sighs> Warning, possible threat to reality and the MEG. Not much is known about this entity, but it has some very anomalous properties, based on the description given by scavengers. The Watcher uh, vaguely resembles Cthulhu from Front Room's literature. However, there are a few major differences between this entity and the fictional Lovecraftian creature. Firstly, I'm assuming that the, the writer of this is not, not a raging racist. Anyway, firstly, the uh, Watcher is much smaller, uh, being about, about five times the height of a front row school bus and much slimmer. It has three eyes and tentacles and seven legs. It also has no wings as well. It is said that it wears a plain gray robe with a high collar. The Watcher's intentions are unknown, but it is hostile. Warning. Do not engage. If you approach the Watcher, you will immediately be transported to the Void. The Watcher has complete control over the Sublime and sees everything inside of its domain. The Watcher can control the events, the hostility of the entities, and is the only one with the ability to exit the Sublime. Biology is unknown and will remain so, as this entity is a cosmic level threat. This singular entity can be found in the desert area of the Sublime. This entity is immune to the events. I mean, it causes the events. Abilities include reality warping abilities, physical telekinesis, psychological manipulation, also known as mind control, spatial fourth dimensional angular vision, metacognitive manifestation, spatial teleportation. No more is known about the Watcher. He is always watching, isn't he? <sighs> Scavengers. Scavengers are a class zero entity exclusive to the dimensional sublime. They are at a human level of intelligence, capable of abstract thinking. They have a sophisticated language and a rich culture. They have communities and the oases part of the sublime. They will usually travel to the wasteland in groups. Most of them will carry vast amounts of supplies. Their only purpose is to scavenge and collect things found in the wreckage of reality and bring the newly found relics back to their communities in the oases. Their culture seems to revolve around the philosophy that every item found in the wasteland is sacred. They seem to respect the things that they find between in the because those things come from a different reality. That should therefore be preserved and studied. Because of this idea, the technological progression is at a much faster rate due to their ability to reverse engineer the technology they find. The scavengers are non hostile and devout pacifists. Scavengers look to be vaguely humanoid by much, much shorter and more stout. They are about 3 feet tall, they have grayish fur all over their skin, as well as pointy ears and four large eyes on their head. They also have retractable claws on their arm. On their four arms. Their arms do not quite have the structure of a humanoid, but it is close enough to the point that they can be referred to as such. Most of them wear cloaks and carry bags with their belongings. <sighs> Scavengers will trudge endlessly through the remnants of forgotten realities, searching for the perfect souvenir. Attempts to investigate the biology of these entities are ongoing, but it is confirmed that they can be classified as part of the Mammalia uh, class. They are also they are quite similar to front room species. They reside in the oasis. These entities are not immune to the events, but they know where to seek out shelter. Honestly, from this picture, they're literally sloths. Okay. <sighs> Life cycle. The following are the confirmed stages of a scavenger's life. 1. Embryo. This is when scavengers start to develop their bodily structure as well as organs in the brain. 2. Newborn. Scavengers at this stage are without fur, but almost fully developed in all other aspects. 3. Infant. Scavengers at this stage have begun to develop co advanced cognitive abilities and manual disc exterior. 4. Younglings. At this stage, scavengers are educated and cultured by the adults of the community and are fully developed. 5. Adult. By this point, scavengers are completely independent and self-sustaining, though they still prefer to travel with the group. 
6. Late adult. Scavengers at this point are required to find a spouse and reproduce, and become social outcasts if they do not. 7. Elderly. This is when scavengers take part in managing and ruling their communities, and is the last stage before death. It looks like that's it, because whatever was going to be here about sandworms is gone. And uh, I think I need to stop reading. This is a very long document and should be its own video. So, next we have the front rooms. <sighs> the front rooms. Survival difficulty, class habitable, safe, sustained communities, devoid of harmful entities. The front rooms are a level of true baseline and reality, separate from the back rooms. The front rooms are considered the major counterpoint Art of the back rooms. They are also oh, the easiest and most practical entrance point to the back rooms. The front rooms are reasonably large, having approximately 150 square kilometers of habitable land and 510 square kilometers, including water and other substances. It is divided into four or seven major portions of land, depending on your, your concept of a continent, and thousands of minor parts. The atmosphere, temperature, and other conditions seem to be very safe for exploring and settling sedentary behavior. The dimensions seem to be pretty old, as a lot of buildings or new were, were constructed and destroyed there. Some theories even say that human life existed in the territory thousands of years ago. The new land has a natural set outline that orbits around it. Residents of the front room called it the moon. The planet also seems to be rotating around a considerably massive star, denominated the Sun. The temperature is assumed to be freezing on the poles and extremely hot at the center, which causes a large part of the population to live in the middle of the two sections for a good balance. It is implied that the front rooms have a lot of depressions and elevations. Some elevations even contain parts of the magma that is present in the center of the planet. The material is very hot, and it is advised not to approach it, not even with proper equipment, unless for research purposes. There is a claim that their materials are hot, hotter than magma, but they say it's deeper in the, into the center of the globe. The giant and parts of the land are divided into smaller and bigger plates, which are present underneath them. If these segments move too much, parts of the, ter of the territory may elevate or combine, causing strange anomalies. This apparently can also happen underwater, but it's hard to notice. If these movements are too extreme, the adventurer is going to experience an, an unpleasant experience with buildings being significantly damaged or destroyed. Unfortunately, some explorers pass away during the, the event. Unfortunately, due to the intensive action of the explorers settled on the edge of the that the future might be dark for the inhabitants there. The average temperature is, is rising and the anomalies have usually that usually happen are getting more frequent and more powerful. They don't even, and if they don't, don't put more effort to stop it, the reality that they live in may be an uninhabitable in, in a few years. Entities. There are no backrooms entities present on this level. Instead, all entities there are exclusively two to dimension, all denominated and separated as different species. Colonies and outposts. Instead of dividing themselves between colonies and outposts, explorers of the front rooms have found in major parts, minor parts of land called countries. These colonies can divide themselves into even smaller colonies for a better assembly of communities. Entrances and exits. Currently, there are some guaranteed ways to exit the back rooms. So most well, the most known exit is level three ninety nine, which happens by walking out the glass door. 
as in the level. More possible entrances from the back rooms to the front rooms. Exiting any door at daytime, I'm in the promised land takes you there, apparently. You can get to the front rooms by reaching the end of the staircase on level 9223372036854775807 and jump into the integral void. However, this is not confirmed. Passing the barrier has a very small chance of leading you here. Throwing paper airplane in level 36 has a small chance of leading you here. <sighs> Exits. Make sudden movements into walls, ceilings, and or floors. If you are fast enough up to where objects can become solid by the time you interact with them, you can no clip into either level 0 or level 1. It is very rare, but you can no clip into level 2 and level 3 as well. There will be an add modifier if you escape via the frame for having no clip into 2, collapsing nebulite into in an unknown level. <sighs> you might have had a laugh, but uh, basically, the front rooms is our reality. The reality that I'm assuming you are watching this video from, as I have a normal or not a novelist Wi-Fi to upload with. I don't know, maybe a backrooms Wi-Fi could would be used for YouTube. I wouldn't know. And I guess I could read the backrooms right here. Although it seems a little bit redundant. It is literally just the front page of the back rooms. We're not reading that. There are some other realities, but this one does not have a page to it, and neither does this one. It's a level redacted, and the yeah, agglutinate matrix do not have any uh, information on them that we can and and look at. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. I egg down below. I mean, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like on the video, or comment down below, or and subscribe to the channel. If you didn't enjoy the video, then why did you waste half an hour or listening to this? Next time, I might make an entire video from the very beginning to the end of the Dimensional Sublime. And I will have to read it from beginning to end again because I clearly lost my place. And also it would make more sense to make it its own video because of how long the, do the document is. Nothing is for certain. You can't con you can't and and hold me to it. Oh yes, and you, if you have any suggestions for things for me to read that are safe for YouTube, I would love to hear them in the comments down below. And if not, that's fine too. I'm just here to make, make some fun videos for you to listen to. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.